And this is especially scary to me because no one knows this and I have to unpack a lot of stuff to get to the point. But the reason that Labor lost in 2019 was because of Keep Sydney Open and the Greens. There I said it. Now, I was saying this in the pre-show. You could side up to the Patreon. Keep Sydney Open? Yeah. No, but you elaborate on the Greens aspect that you were mentioning on the pre-show. The way to look at it, when people always say this, they always say, why are you hitting the Greens? Well, go listen to any pro-Greens podcast, uh, you know, channel, anything like that. Uh, The ABC just constantly airs Greens talking points. So does the uh, Sydney Morning Herald. And why? Because they know it hits Labor. It hits it from a different angle and it splits their vote and it keeps them out. And then people always say... 80% 80% of preferences go back to the Labor Party. What about the other 20%? You think 300,000 votes in squeaker elections like 2016 and 2019 wouldn't have helped Labor. Put aside all the brand damage they do with things like Adani, which we've been saying on this podcast for years. Oh, turns out, as we found out a couple of weeks ago, it was a lemon and it's going to collapse because it's not financially feasible. Who'd have guessed? We did right here. That's why Miss Love passed the university degree <laughs> in fly colours when he went there on a misadventure. Thank you very much. Because he understands the nuts and bolts of it. <laughs> Anyone who's smart knew that Adani was going to fall. And Labor approved it because they knew that it was going to fall. And they want to actually, unlike the Greens, win elections instead of seats. That's all the Greens were doing. All they care about is increasing their vote margin and picking Labor seats off. So they go out, they run a protest a week before the election in Canberra. The ABC picks it up and says, yeah, Labor is really weak on Adani, while the Murdoch press sits there, hits northern Queensland with so weak on Adani, they're not approving it fast enough. And that fucked Labor in Queensland. That and the tax scare campaign. Those were the two things that really hurt Labor in 2019. 2019 rolls over. Not only do you get a bunch of uh, coal mines approved that would have been blocked under the Labor Party, um, you also get, and then I know people are saying like, they're still opening up gas wells and still opening up... Not anywhere near the same quantity that was happening under the Liberals. Nowhere even close. And they're approving all kinds of crazy shit like the Clive Palmer one, that Tanya Plibersek blocked. They're actually putting in the environmental strict standards to stop most of those getting up. And then the Greens sit there and go like, well, they opened up seven gas wells there. Shut the fuck up. Like, it, 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 like it, huge things like that didn't happen. Also, you had uh, the Liberals imp- approving their, uh, what was it, their... their their gas-led recovery. That was a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to restructure our economy around renewables because that's the opportunity that COVID afforded. Instead, you got $7 billion investment in gas instead. You happy with that? Of course they are. The Greens are fucking happy with it because they might have won an extra seat in Queensland and it turns out they didn't anyway. They got another three years of that. You had a Prime Minister that did fucking nothing during the bushfires. Wow, what a win for the environment, guys. You got another three years of them almost allowing so much water theft that the Murray Darling nearly stopped flowing. Wow, what a win for the environment. That was what was happening on a state level as well because John Barillaro was the one that wasn't policing any of the water theft, was allowing the water theft, was bi- approving all of these massive mega cotton farms. Such a win for the environment, guys. No policing on pesticides. Uh, Brazil-level land clearing for another four years. Just winning all the time. What are they doing in this election? They are a do-or-die seat for Labor because <laughs> they need to make a nine-seat spread. Huge, huge ask, especially when you have the media against them. South Coast, uh, incumbent liberal leaving, once in a generation opportunity for Labor to pick up that seat. The Greens decide, oh, actually, I think that we could win this because of our bullshit polling that's extremely optimistic. We're going to put in our own candidate down there. Split Labor's vote. Split Labor's vote, there is not a chance in hell that they're picking up the South Coast. Watch me now, I'm going to be wrong, they're going to pick it up. But like... You know, they, they had a very good chance of winning it and now it's a fucking, you know, chance in hell that they might pick up that seat. What happens then? The Liberal candidate gets to entrench himself for another four years in the South Coast, becomes a new permanent member of the South Coast. Another generation of the Liberals down there. What a win. Uh, now, when you're saying, oh, yeah, that, that, you know, 80% preferences go back to the Labor Party, which is bullshit anyway. Is on that- a state level, 
Is it bullshit? I mean, it's true, but like... It fractures just, it. It can it, fracture it. Like 300,000 votes is a lot of votes, especially when you're talking about those two elections that were determined by a few thousand votes. Mm. Uh, on a state level, guess how much the Greens vote eats up? 50%, nearly. Nearly one in two. Nearly one in two votes for the Greens do not go back to the Labor Party. Gone. Out, trashed. One in two. How? How do because there's the not optional preference. It's optional preferences in New South Wales. It's not mandatory preferences here. Oh. So to get their own little gains, which is all they do, you listen to any media outlet that they have, all the, the Greens ever talk about, all it ever is, is shitting on Labor with bullshit little talking points like their little Adani campaign or something like that. Uh you know, amping up their base of arts curators and stay-at-home mums and shit in Balmain, uh, just being like, yeah, yeah, I should have a say in the Workers' Party. I've never worked a fucking day in my life, but I should have, uh, you know, the, the, the clenchhold th- co- cutthroat on the party of all of these nurses and cleaners and train drivers. I know what's better. I know what's better for those cunts. It's just like, you know, all these fucking Labor delegates that devote their entire life to working their way up in the Labor Party, doing the right thing, or even better through the unions. No, I should have the final say on everything. Me, me, this Balmain mum that started up a clothing (laughs) shop or some shit like that. Me, I'm I'm the real champion of the plebs. Um, Again, because their voting base, this is something that nobody knows about the Greens, their voting base is the richest voting base in the country. They just LARP and play themselves as these little socialists having their little Che Guevara moment. We're going to change society. And while they do that, you know who they hurt every election? The people that actually keep societies running. Your nurses, your firefighters, your teachers. Another four years of those cunts having their budgets cut, their uh, departments privatised, all of these workers getting laid off. That's why New South Wales had such a worse response in the bushfires than Queensland and Victoria did because we didn't have the frontline staff, let alone the frontline know-how, let alone the hoses. We didn't even have the money for the equipment to fight these things. Damn, you're right. All Queensland of that does have the hose. Yeah. <laughs> but doesn't... So, so, <clears throat> so is the situation that when the Greens get votes... Sorry, and then with yeah. Keep Sydney Open, Keep Sydney Open was 2% of the vote. Didn't even try to get their uh, voters to preference Labor. Didn't even try. So that's 2% virtually gone. Just independence. Just gone for nothing. For but, nothing. But because thought... a bunch of inner city fuckwits were like, scenes change. It was way better <laughs> to be in King's Cross. That's the that's the election defining issue when we're talking about the Murray Darling becoming functionally extinct. <laughs> I can't go out. I mean, I can, but like, it's you know, as fun. I, I can't. Yeah, it's not as fun. <laughs> But when the Greens do, when the votes go to the Greens, I thought, it'd be, isn't it a situation of like, you would think logically if there's a policy that Labor's voting on, the Greens go, well, we want more action, but obviously pragmatically we'll just go with what the Labor says. But they don't do that. It's like a protest vote. They do. This is, is that what the happens? worst. They've had their cake and eat it too. Because I still... Th- in the Labor, in, in on a federal level, what were they running on last election? 75% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030. Wow. That's almost 10% a year. That's possible. But did they that's, vote? That is such a... But did they vote read, against Labor? When, huh? Labor's, when Labor said these are our percentages, did they go, all right, whatever? No, they did their same thing because they know they fucked it in the ETS and they'll never admit to it and they have all of these rationalisations for why they did it. You read and listen to their rationalisations for why they voted against the ETS and they will openly admit that we voted against the ETS because we needed to show our constituents that we were willing to walk away from a bad deal. First off, lie. It wasn't a bad deal. We would have a price on carbon and even more importantly with the ETS, we would have uh, an industry set in place whose entire job in the private sector was thinking of ways to reduce carbon. It would have nurtured an entire new industry. And as we're learning from COP25, 5,000 or whatever we're up to now, we are learning 
that governments can only provide about 5 to 10% of the investment needed. There is 90% investment in the private industry that you can unlock very easily by just allowing bank loans to be easier. These little mm. quick little changes in just like you can apply for this loan instead of this loan. You can unlock heaps of private investment that's happening. You know, but, but and that 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 was part of the genius of Kevin Rudd's ETS, as opposed to the carbon tax that they forced yeah. Gillard to introduce. But what I'm, but what I'm, what and then yeah. Tony Abbott could run a scare campaign on it and get zero action on climate change for the next ten years, and they still won't admit to it this day. And you can believe all of the propaganda from the Greens, or you can go and listen to a few bureaucrats talking about how pissed off they are that the ETS wasn't passed, and they'll just demolish all of the arguments that the Greens have about the ETS. So, demolish. So, what them. percentage do? At what percentage do the Greens vote with Labor? Huh? At what what percentage generally do the Greens vote with Labor, and what percentage do they vote? I'm not sure, but they get these key little issues like that where they agree with the 43 percent reduction because they're not idiots; they're hard political strategists, and they're looking to increase their vote all the time. They'll agree with it because they fuck the ETS. They agree to the 43 percent, but they sit there every time and say it's a shit target. It's a shit target, but we agreed to it, so we're being pragmatic. So they've got both so leeway, right? They are but the pragmatic. thing is, with the 43 percent, it would be a miracle. If if Australia gets 43% reduction in eight years, again, because of their inaction for the last 10 years that the Greens bought us, right? Uh, but, like, so we're talking the- about just... We're not talking about politically. We're not talking about, you know, coal keeps the lights on or whatever. We are talking about just basic mathematical engineering. Eight years, you would have to have an engineering revolution in this country to get that level of... Uh, renewables into the grid and with all of the transmitters and everything in place. Like, just in terms of building it, is near impossible with our capacity. We're not talking about money here. We are talking about people that know how to do this actually putting this stuff in place. Practically, 43% is a heroic target. But that's what they're doing on that. So they're always just selling the public all of these bullshit things on a state level. And we were having this big argument at Friendly Geordies, but I'll make my point about it. On a state level, the fact that the Greens are sitting there putting up on all of these billboards, we're going to freeze and cut your rent. You, your five Balmain mums in Parliament, you're going to do that. You're going to go up against uh, a monopoly that is almost entirely privately owned at this point by just like a few, three or four Blade Runner corporations. Uh, You're going to go up against them and you're going to say, we're freezing and cutting rent, are you? Now, you might be able to freeze rent for a small period of time. It happens in pandemics. It happens in the Depression temporarily. It also happens where you don't have the monopolistic concentration that you do have in New South Wales, again, because as the Sydney Morning Herald so succinctly put it, allowing the Liberals to, quote, unquote, finish the job. As we were saying in a previous podcast, when I was looking for a house, one of the people came up and showed us and just pointed out all the suburbs, and you just see it, it's so Blade Runnery, just that suburb, and you see every building, mm. Meriton, 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 that suburb, Lend Lease, Lend Lease, Lend Lease. Three or four companies just own suburbs, and they're just portioned out, ironically, like Monopoly Board Squares. There you go, that's my Monopoly Board Square, right. that's mine. That was all zoning and approval. And then the Greens are coming in, and they're selling you this wonderful miracle diet shake cure that they're going to just cut your rent like that. That what you do not undo... 10 years of the Liberals stacking every development board, putting loopholes in every law, scrapping most of the laws, concentrating a bunch of private powers that used to be state powers into uh, these development approvals. You cannot fix that overnight. I'm awfully sorry, but if you allow the Liberals to win by voting for all of these shit uh, snake oil salesman parties like Keep Sydney Open and the Greens, and on the other side... Uh, One Nation and uh, United Australia, you literally pay the price. Mm. You can't undo this. This is the real world. Yeah, but like mm. to be fair to them, I don't yeah. think they actually intend on doing any of that. They just know they can get away with it because they won't ever form. They won't ever form government, so they can always pretend. Oh, well, if we came into power, then we would have done all of this shit. But because we're not... But I'm just wondering... Exactly. You know? And they always just get to sit on the sidelines so like some drunk in an NRL match yelling about how if they were the fullback, they would have done these moves. This, this is my message to the Greens. <laughs> Don't even worry about fixing the mortgage crisis. Just legalise weed already. Like, just... Yeah, small, small ambitions. goals. Yeah, yeah, small yeah. ambitions. But I'm just, I would just like to know the percentage at which the Greens vote with Labor 
in Parliament and against. I'm curious, but I guess I can. Well, I'm sure we, we can find that, that out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I've never. I'm not advocating it. for it. I'm just saying. I'm just curious. Yeah. I'm just curious because. But you again, know, like that, that's what happened in the last election. They bought them another four years to do all of this shit. And unfortunately, I remember what talking... What do, you mean? what do you mean? You're saying... All of these awful decisions that the Liberals do, like these things happen slowly. You don't turn into Blade Runner overnight. Yeah, yeah. That was happening over 10 years. Yeah. And as we walked out the other day and you just see all of these new apartments yeah, everywhere with oh, these lights. Terrible. And you're just like, this is a fucking dystopia we yes. live in. Well, apparently yes. that's the biggest issue of the election. Yeah, but there is no... Wonder cure to this. And the only no, thing no, that like, Reddit always sits there and says, oh, yeah, like the freeze and the cut. Yeah, we're just going to get the freeze and the cut. There's really not that much difference to that and Clive Palmer Dude, promising freezing worse. 3% interest rates. Like, okay, I get it's a reserve bank decision and there's no way that Clive Palmer could do that. That's a complete lie. And the Greens is like, you know, theoretically possible. Yeah, in theory, communism <laughs> works. Like, it's one of those things. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, but also, it's, it's a lie. It's, right. it's, the sa- it's just... It's a wonder potion cure. It sounds it's, like it's a band The only too. difference between these tonic salesmen is you don't like the yellow tonic. You don't like the orange tonic. You like the green tonic because it's it's targeted to you. Mm. Hey, I like the red tonic, and that's what you're supposed to do tonight. 